Welcome back to the channel. My name is Adam Smith and inside this game found preview series, very excited to be diving into Sirens the Deep Sea coming from Forgotten Tales. Sirens the Deep Sea has already launched on GameFound as of the release of this video. If you want to check out the campaign page for more information on the ongoing campaign, I'll put a link in the top right hand corner and also you'll find it in the pinned comment and video description. Now the purpose of the Game Found preview series is to help you see the game in action. But first, in this video, we're going to get the game to the table, show you how it's all set up in its prototype form. Everything here is subject to change, and even these steps included with the how to set up here are going to change and be enhanced and tweaked in the final version. But you get a great understanding of what you need in order to get this game going. And then we're going to dive into a full solo play together in the near future to show you how this thing flows and operates. So without further ado, let's get started with the first steps of setup. The first step is already complete. We have the game board on the table. On the left hand side, you'll see letters from A all the way to R. And along the bottom, we have 1 through to 25. Sirens of the Deep Sea has three levels in the prototype. You have the level of the surface itself, a raised level 2, and an even higher raised level 3. Now we're going to place some appearance markers. These are circular tokens which have a numerical value on them from 1 to 4. However, with this prototype, I have 2, 3, 4. I'm going to use the 7 as a 1. The four appearance markers have been placed. The seven, which is actually going to be a one for the purpose of this scenario, is up north. To the east, we have a two. South is a three. And to the west, we have a four. Now let's go ahead and start placing some buildings as well as other tokens to tie into those buildings and some resources. We have a couple of resources in place. We have whole coral. We also have a green pearl and we have two X markers above both of them. On M11, we have the Durant main building, which has an X marker on it and a defensive marker. We'll talk more about these markers when we get into gameplay. Now below the main building, we have a caravan and above it there, we have a marketplace and to the right, the chest is a warehouse. Now you'll notice that two of the resources are turned over, but if we actually flip those to the opposite side, they become randomized resources. And in this scenario, there will be some we are not sure of until we go and discover them. So we'll put those off to the side for now, and I'll show you how we get those randomized in just a moment. Let's continue to place more of the buildings for the scenario. We have more buildings to take a look at. We have an outpost up here. We also have a mount shop as well as a blacksmith, and we have two carpentry buildings, one here and one here. There's also what's known as a stream tube up here, taking up four positions. Now on the right hand side of the board, we have a few more buildings to place as well as a few more resources face up. Up north, we have a net maker. We have a magician, a warehouse and another outpost. Up on this level three terrain, we're going to have a geyser melt as well as two face up resources. We have an osmium resource as well as down here. We have a wood resource next to the carpentry building. Just south of the net maker building, we have a green grass resource. Also worth mentioning over here, the Geyser Melt Building has a Geyser resource right beside it. And something I missed over here on the left hand side is that this Carpentry Building over here also has a wood resource beside it. With all the known things now sent, we're going to talk about the unknowns. And that's going to be these resources here in the bottom left hand corner. There's eight of them. These are different ones necessary for this scenario specifically. We're going to flip them face down, shuffle them around and place them in the designated spots around the game board. The resources have been flipped and mixed around. Let's place them. All eight of the resources have now been placed, as you can see, face down. One of them is hiding behind the level three over here in this position. That does it for setting up our environment for the scenario. Let's move on to the next major step. Now it's time to set up our sirens. And for myself playing solo and controlling two of them, I've selected my first one to be Zenea. I've got her miniature here, which matches the artwork on the player dashboard, as well as the ability board here to the right. These are two separate dashboards here in the prototype. And above we have the equipment board. I've also grabbed Zen's dice. We have two Siren dice, which are the white ones. We have a green Dodge die. The three down below correspond in order to the three areas down here. And they're going to be bonus things that you can add into either your attack, your defense, or even your crit. On the dashboard for the character, you also see a track here for life points. And you're going to see one that is rounded out with red on it. That's going to be where your life point marker or cylinder is going to start in. So you'll place the red one there. Next up is the life stream, which is this column right here, which goes from 1 to 20. You're going to place your green cylinder token in the 20th position. On the far right hand side of the ability dashboard is the spirit points column. and It goes from 1 to 10. You're going to place a blue cylinder on 4. Now in this scenario, the special abilities here at the top of the ability board are going to come in activated, which means these three tokens here, instead of starting off the game board themselves, are going to be placed right on top of their respective positions. 
And that means they come in active and ready to go from the start. Now we get our starting equipment for the Siren. In this case, here is what's specific to Zen. I've got two weapons here on the left. I know these are level one. If I flip the cards over, you'll actually see the weapon icon on the back with the level one. Same one for this one here, but they are different. This one is a water cutter. This one is a long cutter. And then we have armor options here, the water armor or the pearl armor. We have stats through the middle here of what they are when they are crafted with the resources required to make them. But at the beginning, you get one, which is awesome. Later, if you want to upgrade them with specific resources, they can become more powerful and more useful for you. I've selected the water cutter and that is going to satisfy the first starting equipment I can take, either a weapon or armor. I chose a weapon. Now we can move on to the next one I get for free, which is either a saddle or a net from the three I have here. I chose to go with the saddle this time around, and this is going to give me a boost on certain stats as well as the weapon I chose. We're going to go ahead and use some dice to represent the boost we get from these two equipment pieces. Now looking at my water cutter here, the stat of attack is going to be boosted by three. So I've gone ahead and placed a die here for three. I had a default three attack. It's now been increased by three more. So it's a total of six. Thanks to this, if I choose to upgrade this in the future, I could bump it up by another one and then use the die to represent that it would tick up to a four. Now over here, we have a dodge and you can see on the saddle, it gives me a two on my dodge. I already have two by default. So a two goes on thanks to the saddle for a total of four. Now other stats that are here like this one in blue, is the initiative which is a standard two by default for this siren but nothing gained for having the cutter it's a zero and then over here for the saddle that is going to be for movement which is this one right here i can move quite fast with zen but no additional movement on this one as i prioritize more so the dodge than i did movement but in the future i could upgrade this saddle in order to bump my dodge up one more now let's move on to abilities here. We have a full breakdown. We start with the three basic abilities, which we actually get to place white cylinders inside of. On the left-hand side, once they're used, they will move to the right. So we'll go ahead and place white ones in each of those three. And then we're gonna put some passive abilities to use. We're gonna get two black cylinders on the very first two, which will give us stuff that will be beneficial and passive at all times. So I've got white cylinders representing my three basic, which I always get from the very start. I have two passive ones marked. And if you want to know what any of these things are, that's where you use the handy reference for the actual siren you're using, which will break down each and every one of these abilities. Each and every siren inside the game is going to have its own reference sheet, which is the skill tree or the ability tree for that siren. And it's broken down into a number of rows. So you have the passive row along the bottom. We've unlocked with the black markers, spirit rush and no weakness. The next one is the basic row. That's the basic abilities. So we have swap one, blockade one, sweeping, blow. So if you want to know what these things do, this is where you look. Next up, we have the level one row, then two, three and four. You'll see interconnecting lines between them because you have to unlock certain ones before before you can move up to the higher tiers. And at the very, very top here, we have the special abilities, those tokens we placed on the ability dashboard just moments ago. So we know for Zen, we already have these two and we've got these three as well. So this scenario tells us now to choose one active level one ability, which means we can go to this level one row here across and pick whichever one we want. I'm going to be aggressive in this situation. I'm going to go for all round strike. This says to roll a D6 twice, the highest value as additional attack value. So we're going to go ahead and unlock that on our dashboard. I've now unlocked all round strike, which has a white cylinder in the left side. Now, something worth noting around the equipment tracker, which is up here, when you get a piece of equipment, you're also going to go ahead and place an orange cylinder in these slots as well. And you're going to place it in the first position the first time it's either crafted or given to you at the very beginning of a scenario. And this is going to remind you that you only get to take advantage of these dice with the very first row. Once you get to the upgrade and take advantage of that one, you'll move this cylinder to the next position to let yourself know and also remind yourself to uptick the die and to to remind you that you've maxed out that particular weapon. We now move to the consumables. Each siren is going to get to pick three. So we go through all the consumables that we have available. They're going to have all kinds of different benefits, things like always finding the artifact, which sounds nice instead of rolling for it. All sirens escaping from a battle sounds pretty nice. We have preventative strike rolling a D4 and causing direct damage against one opponent after the initiative phase. There's a number of good ones in here. I'm going to choose three. The last thing to grab for your siren is the game round order card. You're also going to grab the token that corresponds to the same number, which is on the card. That's going to help you when you get into battle and initiative becomes a thing. This token will represent your character. 
The second siren I'll be controlling is Vander. I have Vander's miniature here, same dice setup. We have consumables selected. I chose Mighty Slash 2 for my level one. Got my basic ones ready to go. My pass is ready to go. Also got myself this armor card. So we chose a little differently. Got myself a nice defensive boost. So we got seven here as a total, thanks to this. Also a plus two on health. So instead of it starting in the red position here on 13 for Vander, it's actually gonna be at a 15 for maximum health. And the Coral Sword here is going to give a boost of three to the attack, which is nice. Give me a five total. We'll shift from Siren setup to the Spirit Board, which is up top there with two tracks. The top track going around the outside is the track specific to breaking the boss's armor. On the Spirit Board, you can spend Spirit Points in order to move a boss armor marker around the track to the position where the broken shield resides. Once you get it there, you can start doing direct damage to the boss. Now in two player mode or when you're playing solo controlling two characters instead of placing this boss armor break marker at the very beginning of the track where the shield looks all nice you're actually going to place it halfway through the track as I've done. The smaller marker on the inside track is the resource boost marker. So again, when you have spirit points to spend, you can choose to use them to move the outside marker, the boss marker, to get it to the breaking point where you can do damage, or you can put those spirit points to good use to bump up that shell token in the middle around its track, and that's going to increase how many resources you're able to pull beyond the norm. Next up, we have the game round board itself. We have the game round track here, which is this larger one. And then below, we have game phases along the bottom. You have to go through an entire 10 game rounds to go through one game phase. And over here, you have the stream current. There'll be a direction that the current is moving the water, and that's going to have an effect on the gameplay. And so the direction of that is very important. When setting up the scenario, you'll simply place the game round marker on the position that indicates the exact same icon as the artwork. Same down here for the game phase. And then over here, we have a marker depicting where the stream or the flow of the current is going to be going. It'll be direction west for this scenario. The Nawakai token has been placed on game round number two. You can see that there. It's going to have an impact when we hit that round. The final thing to go over for setup is the enemies themselves. We're going to get the appearance cards for the Shirak and the Rukata. These are two separate decks and only the level ones will be present at this point in time. We're going to shuffle these together, keep them hidden in a pile off to the side of the game board. The appearance deck for the enemies is all set up and also to the right of it, the events deck. In this scenario, all the special events are also part of the scenario. At this point, we've got everything to the table we need to begin gameplay for scenario number four. There is one thing to add, and that is the caravan standee itself going on the caravan building. With this now in position right here, everything is complete. And it's worth mentioning there is a combat board which has initiative on it. Things to do with the enemies. We will talk more about this when we actually run into enemies as we get into gameplay together. Stay tuned as we head into part number one of gameplay as we dive into the narrative of the scenario to find out what we're trying to accomplish, our objectives for the particular chapter that we're in, and also any additional setup we'll need to do as we dive into that very first chapter. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, keep on rolling solo!